plaintiff, Steve Crower, says John Denver inspired him to pursue his love of music, and he ended up in a band with the defendant. However, Steve claims he was eventually fired from the band, and he's suing today for unpaid expenses. Defendant Steve Bender says the plaintiff was extremely generous, but things went south after he tried to steal the band's copywritten material. Steve denies owing the plaintiff for anything. Start with you. So my musical journey started back in, I was in high school in bands, but um, I was uh, a fly fishing guide for John Denver in uh, Alaska and for three days. And we kind of talked about playing guitar and just kind of went back and forth over the three days. And so he um, basically said at the end of it, he goes, you know, you should really pursue a career in music. And I was like, no. I'm already in college. I'm already got my path. And so uh, uh, that was kind of an interesting start. So 25 years later, I had an, a career in the oil and gas space, the energy career, I lived all over the world, Norway, Canada, Mexico, um, New Orleans, New York, Houston. But I always carried my guitar. I always played, kind of enjoyed it. Did you stay in um, touch with John Denver at all? Uh, his, uh, his, his girlfriend at the time became his ex-wife. Mm-hmm. And I've kind of communicated with her a little bit, but, uh, and some of the people in his group I've communicated with, yeah. And you were an engineer who went into oil and gas? Is that what you went to? Yeah, and then I went to Michigan and I got an engineering degree and I got hired. University of Michigan? Yeah. What years? Oh, you Uh, probably. 1986. 86? 1991. Okay, I was up the street from you until 85 at Eastern Michigan University. Okay. And so as you see, I got a better deal at Eastern. Than, <laughs> than, sure did. Than you and my son who went to University of Michigan. Oh. <laughs> All right, and how did you meet your friend after you began playing the guitar everywhere? In 2014, I took my daughter, who was two at the time, to the School of Rock to sign her up to a little rock, maybe learn some basic beats and basic rhythms. And I was talking to the owner of the studio and he was, uh, he goes, well, we got an adult band. Why don't you want to be in the adult band? I was like, you don't want me in any band. I'm not very good. My timing's off. I just, I just kind of play around the house kind of stuff. He's like, no, that's the, that's the, the purpose. So I went to the School of Rock for two years, learned 48 songs, Def Leppard, Clapton, Hendrix, um, all the masters and f- and did four shows. You learned their songs. They didn't mentor you. Jimmy Hendrix's been dead for many years. Don't start no, lying. No, they didn't mentor me. But, but when you have to learn a Hendrix song, you feel like the guys in the room. The University of Michigan. Yeah. What years? No, oh, you uh, probably. 1986. 86? 1991. Okay, I was up the street from you until 85 at Eastern Michigan University. Okay. So as you see, I got a better deal at Eastern. <laughs> than, sure did. Than you and my son, who went to University of Michigan. Oh. <laughs> Plaintiff Steve Crower was in a band with a defendant who claims things went south after Steve stole the band's copywritten material. All right. <laughs> he didn't direct When you learn a Clapton you. song, you better get your Clapton song. I was with one of his mentees. I'm sure you all know him. Sunday night, uh, uh, Ernie Isley. Oh, of the Isley Brothers. Brothers. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he is second only to him. You got a couple others there. Santana's there with a the guitar for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, They're all great. Uh, yeah, but certainly Ernie uh, was mentored. He say uh, Jimmy's he first band. Toured, yeah, with his first band for two years. Yeah. Look at him. <laughs> What's up about music? <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, it's very impressive so that you were able to conquer school, that. Right? Basically, mm-hmm. basically, they said, go. My mentor said, go play the blues. You don't need to be here anymore. You don't need this pay for you know band. So I went to played 150 shows in the open mic nights in the blues bars in two years and so 7 30 at night my wife and kid are on the couch and i'm heading out to the bars to with my amp and guitar to play the blues and so i played 150 shows and so at the end of that little period i posted a song i played barbara rally at uh at a bar and i posted it on facebook and um mr bender saw it and he we had a conference call on a friday i I auditioned on a Sunday and we had a our first show on a Tuesday. I learned seven songs 
in two days and we came in second in the battle of the bands thing we won four hours of recording studio time all right none of that would have happened in, unless you and without you coming on board well they were they were pretty good so he changed but your it, life you know, he changed your life now what you're here for why don't you pay this man he changed your life you wouldn't you wasn't winning nothing before he came <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, let me hear from you. So let me let him give some background now and then I'll get back to you at this point we're at now. Go ahead, sir. Give me some background on your association and maybe background on your uh, life experience as it relates to this or anything else you want to tell me. Sure. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Well, my background is a little quite different. Uh, I started in school. I I played drums when I was about seven years old and and went into marching band in high school. And I did drum corps international and did the whole big marching band thing. But then uh, instead of going to college, I decided to join the military. So I went into the submarine service for about 10 years. And it was during that time I just kind of quit playing music. I just kind of forgot that whole idea and just went on with my military career. And when I got out of the military and came back here to Denver, then uh, I, picked, I taught myself piano, um, started playing with a couple of local blues bands out here in Colorado. And then I got picked up onto a band that does a lot of cover band, uh, cover songs. And so I, we did that for a while. We were playing four hour shows, five hour shows. Uh, so it really got my teeth into the whole industry and playing live in front of people. and. Uh, it was about 2014 that my best friend Tracy Brinkley and I decided to form our own band, uh, which our band now is called Met by Fate, and that's the band that we brought Mr. Crower into to to help us out with. Okay, and how did it go with uh, when Mr. Kroger came aboard? It was great. And, you know, to be honest with you, we were doing good. Uh, we'd actually already won some free studio time in this battle of the bands. We brought Crower in. We our lead guitar player at the time had to move to Florida, so we were without our lead guitar player right in the middle of of a competition. So we held some auditions. We actually hired a lead player uh, named Sean, and then we brought Mr. Crower in to be as a, a sixth member, uh, three full guitars to kind of do some things that most bands can't do. And just like he said, uh, the show was actually the next night after the audition, he came out. We really had a great show, finished second and got some got some free recording time and, okay. and everything was well, great. Well, uh, both uh, live and and uh, entertain in Denver? Yes. Absolutely. Is that where you at? I love that. One of my favorite cities. Lived there for a while. All right. So um, catching back up with you, <laughs> Mr. Crower. Hmm? We started rehearsing about once a week. And, uh, and so I was interested in getting into the music business. I was already in the oil and gas, uh, gas business. And I, that, bit, that was going really well. And I was like, you know, I, why not get in the music business? So... I went to LegalZoom and downloaded a, it's called a band partnership exhibit, which is exhibit page eight in your package. My attorney went over it. Um, I had other industry people look at it and they said, this is a really fair deal. $10,000 for recording shows, gear, travel, and payback of capital. And the band participates on a pro rata bas- ba- basis. So I figured since Bender and Brinkley had, you know, were the founders of the band. I gave them 46% of the profit after payout. 23 and 23 each. I took 16%. I paid for three shows at 250 a show, 750, $800 for the other guitar. You mentioned Sean. I gave Sean $800 for car parts so we could go to work and come to practice. And I gave a, the, spe- the bass player $100 for a speaker so his speaker would work. And, um, but then after several meetings and in about October 2019, I, they gave me a little background of what B&B Music was owned 50-50 by Bender and Brinkley. But B&B Music was never, was never even set up, I found out at that point. So they wanted 100% ownership and control over the capital. I was like, there's no way. His partner, Brinkley, is in bankruptcy right now. That what did you all did. agree on? It, it, it's not this 20-pager you gave me? Did you, no. That wasn't they just, the agreement? They, 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 they couldn't get into the document. I, I was trying okay. to get him to give some comments back. And then Bender's outbursts and Brinkley's political views, they were non-representative what? of what I wanted to be. If they you ran to, you off because of their political views. Yeah. Were they at the Capitol or something? Go to page 23, please. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good the way he's saying it, sir. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. 
Whoa, I, I am know. white. This is from Tracy Brinkley. Yeah. I am it's white. 50. I'm not going to try to be less white. If you have a problem with my whiteness, you are a racist. You are the problem. Wow. All you white business owners who voted for Joe, to the back of the line, bees. That's strangely again. I knew they had that capital picture in there. <laughs> they got the capital picture. They got the capital picture with the guns drawn and everything. When God needed to be reminded which children a pa Oh my God, this is horrible. No, this isn't yep. funny. This is horrible, horrible, horrible. It has blood dripping down from a curtain in what appears to be a window at a concentration camp and it says Passover when God needed to be reminded which children not to kill. Wow. I want people to know about anti-Semitism, about racism. So I hope everybody's listening and not thinking all this stuff is made up and Somebody, she thinks the Capitol was staged. I'm gonna keep going. We can't blame every Islamic person for what happened on 9-11. Yep, can't keep blaming slavery and racism on every white person either. Uh, no, just your ancestors. That's me talking. Um, science has come a long way. When you can take an Indian and Jamaican and get an African American, science. To the white people apologizing for the past, Speak for yourself. Got that point. Now, he's saying that to inflame me clearly, which is not, I know, he, I know it exists out there. I'm not inflamed. I'm inspired to fight more against racism. The more I see it, the more I want to fight back against it. So that's why I say, bring it on, bring it on. I want, I want to see it. Plaintiff Steve Crower was in a band with the defendant who claims things went south after Steve stole the band's copywritten material. You don't even have to respond to that. I didn't see your name on it. But if you want to deny any political affiliations with that, we can do that and move right along to this case. Back to the, to the money. Where yeah, that, I, I would just like to say that, that we, a big rule of our band is, is we do not bring politics into the band. Now, unfortunately, my views don't align with my, my partners and that might be why we write music so well together, but you, you cannot, you can trust me that my views are on the opposite end of his. Okay, good enough. Hey, just to be clear, the anti-Semitic one was Bender's Post. Whew, that was the word. Yeah. Sir. Let's leave it alone. Yeah. All right. All right. And you want a refund for what expenses based on what agreement? I put 4,100, well, we, before we went in the studio, mm -hmm. It was an agreed that we were going to donate the CCM studio time, along with capital from my account, to do this to do the studio recording. It was forty one forty one seventy. Then there's these others expense sixteen hundred dollars for the summer when I was paying for the other band, other other stuff. But it was I was trying to help these guys out. They needed to record these songs, otherwise, you're just going to be playing in their in somebody's basement for years. Was there a time frame? We will pay you back after we get on our feet. We will pay you back when we get our stimulus check. That's everybody's doing that yeah. now. But what did you hear? What did they tell I you? I got one more. Go ahead. Royalties. Off <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> that's good. Cool. That's more. the worst. It's called the music business. That is horrible. I'd pay you back on royalties for a song that hadn't been published yet. <laughs> Or if it is published, unless it's making, unless it's a hit and it's being played, you get no or sold, you get no money from it. So what was said though after you spent this money or during the process? You can't sue and win unless you had an agreement that was breached. You know, you're it was all like verbal. It was. Okay, let me, you say it was an agreement, but it was verbal. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, sir. Yeah, well, he's correct when he says that it's verbal. However, how this whole thing started, when, because we won the free hours for the contest that we were in, we went in and we realized that the few hours that we had would only get you maybe one or two songs if you were lucky. It wouldn't even be fully mastered. 
Uh, the thing about Mr. Crower is that he had no problem letting us know how comfortable he was financially. He's taking his family to Hawaii. He's going to Tennessee and Texas. He he was in a really good position financially. What and does he, this man, how y'all count this man's money and determine whether y'all going to pay him back based on what he makes? Pretty much. Well, it was how you going to count this court. man's money and determine whether you're going to pay him? Go ahead. He was doing what? He was living a good life so, and then what? So, so the original uh, the original agreement that we had uh, was that he would help finish these recordings. We had no idea how much money was going to be involved. If he just said, "Let you know, let me pay for these studios. Let's get a good album out." He even said that the only way he wanted to get repaid at that time was through downloads. He said that if the that the band wouldn't be responsible if he never got paid back, he was okay with that. He felt that we were good enough to become profitable, that he was going to get his return of investment. He started actually bringing in his own musicians. He started to take over as if it was his band. And then actually what really kind of put the nail in the coffin is while all of this was going on, and we we had talked with him many, many times about it. If you're going to set a session, just talk to Tracy and I. We're cool with that. Um, he told us he was trying to sell our music to other companies, and we said, please just talk to us before you do that. This is all copyrighted material. Um, but he continued to do that without our knowledge. He came back from Nashville and then told us after his trip from Nashville that he spoke to a studio in Nashville about recording there that now all of a sudden he wants us to pay for. Um, the. He he was a good friend of, for everybody. He did a lot of stuff besides everything that we see in the lawsuit. I mean, he took us out to dinner. He took he took some of my bandmates out to a concert. I mean, he's a very very generous person. You know, I, I will give him a lot of credit with that. Um, it's just that once I found out that he actually tried to steal my copywritten songs from my band and try to publish them under his own. That's when everything went sour. Plaintiff Steve Crower was in a band with the defendant who claims things went south after Steve stole the band's copywritten material. A few things I heard, uh, oh, I interpret after hearing what you said. And that is that he was a very aggressive business partner, which that's what you want. You said he's right. We had a verbal agreement. Then you said, he said the band is not would not be responsible. That's correct. That's correct, Your Honor. For the monies that he put in to a business that you all mutually own. That doesn't sound reasonable. He's well, a actually, very smart man. Well, that doesn't sound reasonable. Go ahead. He had no, well, Your Honor, he had no ownership in this band. He was just the sixth member. There's only two owners of this band and then four other members. That's of even more family. reason to get his money back. He had well, no ownership interest. Right. Well, he did say that he, if he didn't get payback, he was willing to lose that money, but he was comfortable enough knowing that we would become profitable. Stop counting that man's money. He wasn't money. worried about that. But that's why he continued to, con even after we told him to no longer schedule any more sessions at the studio until this was resolved, he continued to do that. And I found out later that he continued to not only schedule sessions for himself, but he brought his own musicians in, and that's when he started to re-record our songs for us. You didn't have a written agreement, so I have to decipher through what I'm hearing. He said you told them that the band would never be responsible. That's the key thing that he has said that will really make or break this case. Anyone have any evidence that says that? No, Your Honor, that was strictly just a verbal discussion. So what do you have, sir? You go to page uh, in your packet uh, 26. What are you trying to prove on 26? What will what is it to prove to me? So they basically said in this when they fired me from the band that I was an employee of the band. OK. And yeah. I was like, I would have never judge. I would have never. You are I've strictly an employee years. of the band. Yes. And I that, that look at the date on this thing. This thing was. This was um, dated in May. Well, in that's April. what they're saying. And you might want to remain an employee if you want your money back today. No, uh, no, no. That's not the point. The point I'm trying to make, if they would have said this up front, you are an employee of the band up front in the first month, I wouldn't have continued a single day. I was a person that financed and played with the band. 
thinking that you were a part, you thinking that you were part owner, a part of the band. But when you got this, employee. what did you say in response? You were. This I'm is your duty you to, to clarify. I'll see you in court. Okay, got got it. Plaintiff Steve Crower was in a band with the defendant, who claims things went south after Steve stole the band's copywritten material. All right, and whew, um, on the monies. Well, there's a concept in the law that is called unjust enrichment or detrimental reliance, meaning if there was no meetings of the mind, that's what happened here. You all never had the same understanding of your agreement, never. And so with that in mind, you look to see who's been enriched by that misunderstanding. Then you look at detrimental reliance. That means when someone relies on you all's discussions, whether you all disagreed on the discussions or not, he relied on those discussions to your benefit and to his detriment. You all did attempt to negotiate a contract, which led him to believe that you all were seeking to engage in business together. And he did in reliance on something y'all said that enriched you guys. So he has to be put back into the situation or the status, if you will, that he was before this misunderstanding. And so I'm going to grant him his $5,000 based on those theories in the law. And so have a good day, sir. And be careful about this entertainment business. Don't sign mm -hmm. or do anything and partner with people who don't have as much as you because they're going to count your money and then try to beat you out of it. That's Good advice. the nature Thank you. of the entertainment game if they don't have as much as you. Hey, Judge, do you want to go in a, want to be in a band with me? Go oh, hell no. You just stop. Excuse me. The judgment for the plaintiff. <laughs> hey, Bender, I know you can be violent. I am not going to take a restraining order. I'm just asking you don't come within 100 feet of my family. Okay, I, for one, I've never been violent in my life, and uh, so I don't know where what do you think that but you know I, I appreciate all the stuff you did with us and we had a good time i wish things could have turned out different but uh, good luck on your on your music journey and uh, and i wish you the best my friend